Hallo. G'day, Owen here with my scratch built Morganaut. Everything on here is made from raw materials, except of course there is a GW Orc up here in the turret. Everything else is plastic hard. There are some ping pong balls for joints. Can't see them at this angle, but trust me, they are there. Uh, there are some O-rings, easy to see on that side. You'll get a better look at them turning things around. Uh, and there is some solder being used on the custom force field projectors. Everything else is made from flat plastic card or plastic tubing of some sort, except for some bass guitar strings up there for cables. So let's uh, start spinning it around. Uh, by the way, the jaw at the moment is just hanging loose. Uh, I've left everything pinned together so that I can paint it. It'll be much easier to paint, but I haven't glued the jaw on. It doesn't pin on in its proper position. Those two hydraulic things there will be holding the jaw on when it's completed. Uh, so we've got the big legs there. Uh, I was thinking originally of putting some armor plates up here. They ended up not making it on because it's kind of big already. I didn't want it to get even bigger. Uh, it's a bit bigger than I planned. The legs weren't originally going to be quite so thick. So instead of putting them on the plates, I've ended up with the missile launchers just stuck to the back of the legs there and force field projectors up there. Uh, missiles made from various sizes of tubing. The warheads on them were just made by uh, putting the plastic rod, the thickest plastic rod I could get hold of, into my drill and then running my drill uh, with the rod pushed up against some sandpaper or emery boards to shape them. And these custom force field projector bits here are made from various thicknesses of plastic hard tubing, uh, plastic tubing with solder wrapped around them to give that sort of ribbed effect, uh, which I really like for that kind of thing. Uh, the turret up here does rotate, not all the way. Uh, being a true orc, I didn't plan anything and it's ended up hitting a few things. Most of that turret's actually made from a PVC cotton uh, pipe T-joint uh, with a lot of things stuck to it. Let's rotate around a bit further. Uh, you can just see there, there's a door under the tail here to allow the, uh, the cargo of orcs to jump out and beat people up because they're orcs and that's what they like doing. Keep spinning it around a bit further, there's the other leg. And if we keep going around, we get back to the front. Uh, so we've got the Morkonauts armament. So we've got one twin shooter there, another twin shooter up the top. The Mega Cannon, I think. I can't remember the names all the time. Mega Cannon, Mega Blaster, and then the two twin link rocket launchers. Uh, also, there's another access hatch there for some of the orcs to get out and beat people up. And a periscope, because I felt like building a periscope. So, um, let's go in for some close-up details. Alright, so starting off with the main turret with the Mega Cannon. Uh, as I say, PVC pipe there. Some bits of tubing. These on top, I uh, forgot to mention earlier, one of the things that weren't scratch-built, I guess. Those are actually self-adhesive pearl domes, uh, I think they're called. They are for scrapbooking. Uh, you can buy them at craft shops. They come on a sheet, there's a lot of them. Um, they've got an adhesive backing which you can peel off really easily. Very nice if you want to create domes. I like using them on all projects. Uh, you can get smaller ones that make a really nice rounded rivet. Uh, I prefer the plastic rod slice squared off top rivet for orc stuff, but if you're doing a steampunk thing, it can be really nice. So I've got the main cannon there. I've got coaxial mega blaster because I was really running out of places to put things. Um, scratch built twin shooter on the top there with the orc. Some exhaust pipes around the back because, well, Mega Blasters need their own power supply, so there's some engine y gubbins. Uh, the whole thing does actually come off, it's just on a pin. And at the moment, everything is still removable um, for painting. Okay, here we are, close up of the rocket launchers there, just on their rails. Um, kind of running out of time and motivation, so they're very simple rockets on a rail. And the Force field generators there. Um, force field generators will be painted up so that these coils are a glowing blue, um, as I've done with my mega, uh, my 
Big Mac in Mega Armor. He's got the same effect there. Also, I've got some huge exhaust pipes in there. A lot of interesting engine-y bits. A lot of exhausts. I, I just figure orcs like exhausts, so I tend to put quite a lot of them on an orc project. Spin this round a bit. We've got the other side. Uh, same arrangement, rocket launchers, custom force field, and the hydraulics that run the leg in there. And of course, if I spin around a little bit further, there's the periscope. Uh, because I figure the, the driver's behind there, he doesn't have much of a field of view, so I thought a periscope would be cool, and I just fancy building one. So hey, I built a periscope, who cares? Move the camera down a bit so that we can have a look at some of the lower details. So we have these big uh, knee armor plates on the legs, which this one's got the mech boy symbol. Uh, that was meant to be a gob, looks a bit more like a crown. We've got a bad moon on there. I've tried to put a lot of glyphs on here. I like glyphs, they always look cool. If we rotate around a little bit further, uh, we've got the jaw, and um, it's got Chompa written on it because that's what it's going to do. Um, we can see the, the front and all the various hatches and gubbins that go on there. And then if I spin around a little further, we get a bit of a look at the other leg. The camera's off center at the moment, so it's not brilliant. But uh, So we've got the, the lightning bolt there and the big DACA symbol. Uh, plenty of glyphs there. If we spin around the whole way, there we have uh, the hatch down the bottom, or I've built a ladder down there so the orcs can climb out and uh, beat someone up because, well, they're orcs, they want to beat people up and they want to do it right now. So this will hopefully get them into beating up range nice and quickly. Okay, so as I said, it's not actually all stuck together yet. I want to keep things separate for painting, but this means we can have a good look at the sub-assembly. So here's the, the body. This was the first part of it that I built. Uh, if I turn that upside down, we can see there's a lot of detail on the underside um, all sorts of worky bits and a uh, glyph on the front I've gone and forgotten what that glyph is which is a bit embarrassing uh, lunatic or something I think I can't remember what glyph it was I know, I know the orc glyph for fun fair is Raza because in second ed orcs liked fun fairs apparently um, GW don't seem to admit to that one anymore but they did actually have their own glyph for fun fair it was a kind of half a ferris wheel seen from the side and yeah and I've gone and forgotten what that one is uh, there on the front and it's upside down so um, obviously right way up when we assemble the thing but there's a lot of vents and odd bits of detail down here you can also see there's the massive brass pins that I've put in to um, hold the legs on and you can clearly see the ping pong balls there that I've used for the joints um, there's green stuff sealing in the edges. That's not so much to hold the ping pong ball in, but also to fill the gap in there. Uh, the circular bits back here are actually based on uh, a piece of MDF that's been cut out with one of those hole saws uh, that cut circular holes. Uh, it, it's the actual hole part of it. Um, and the ping pong balls are a bit smaller than the, uh, the size of hole saw that, that was used there. So needed to fill in a bit of space um, and also give them a bit of reinforcement. Ping pong balls aren't super, super strong. They're not structural, they're purely for visual. The pins go all the way through into the MDF so they're nice and secure. Jaw took me a little while to build, um, not because it was difficult or anything, but uh, because uh, as you can see, it's got those big caps on top of the teeth. Uh, and that's because when I first built it, it's made around a, a core of balsa wood, then a one millimeter plastic card glued on the outside. Uh, when I originally built it, there were a lot of gaps that needed filling, uh, and I went a bit overboard with Tamiya white putty, and um, it softened the, uh, the plastic. Uh, so things were all a bit squishy, uh, so I had to cover them over again and um, fix it up. I think I might have tried to sand it back before it was completely dry or something there. Uh, it was always going to have some sort of tooth cap things, but they're a lot bigger and more exaggerated than I'd originally planned. Uh, and then of course, underneath, inside, it's not particularly detailed because the, the body's going to get in the way there. We've got the legs here. Um, they're not absolutely identical. They're close. Uh, they're one of the few things that I did detailed design sketches for on this model was the legs. Basically everything else I just made up as I went along because that's how orcs work. Um, these needed a bit more thinking about to make sure the stance was right and to make sure everything hooked up correctly. Uh, one big difference is that one of the feet is actually five mil longer than the other. I messed up my measurements somehow. 
uh, and that's actually why the legs are in different positions. There's uh, this one here, there's more space for the leg to uh, go in, which meant that you could bend further. So the legs have ended up in slightly different poses, which is good. That's what I was actually aiming for. Um, and I achieved it completely by accident. So if we spin these round, oh, by the way, the, um, the armor plates here do actually come off the painting. I've just left them in. Yeah, we can see the, the terrible mess that I've made uh, drilling holes for those pins to go into. I had to drill several on both sides just to get the posing right, get everything nice and flat, but it's all working now and no one's going to see that and we're all going to pretend we didn't see it so that I feel a lot better and people think I'm actually good at this kind of thing. And back again in his majestic semi-completed unpainted glory, well I mean completed but unpainted glory. Uh, not in his base here, I've got the base, um, just not sitting him on it here because you can barely see it anyway. He is bigger than an actual Morkonaut's meant to be but not to a huge degree and he looks much much more entertaining so sticking with that there. Um, we'll be painting him up fairly soon, probably going to take quite a while, this is, this is actually going to be the largest miniature I've ever painted for a war game. This guy is going to probably start painting him up tonight, uh, there will be updates on the blog, there will be uh, probably posts and videos when he gets finished, and I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this look inside my strange and twisted brain and one of my large, bizarre and irritable creations, and I'll see you next time. So long, you both fans.